Hello, pet and podcast people. Welcome to another episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the only podcast that talks to musicians about their canine companions. I'm your host, Tim Dill, along with my dog, the master of napping, Charlie, and today we are excited to share a fun conversation with Jason Walsmith of the Nadas, who are celebrating their 30th year together and just released their latest album, Come Along for the Ride, on August 11th. And these are his three road-tested Rocker Dogs. My current Rocker Dogs, yeah, I'll start uh, oldest to youngest. So uh, Pepper, she's a probably 13-year-old Gordon Setter. Uh, and then her uh, her younger, we call I guess we call they're not even related. Anyway, the, the next one is uh, Potter, and he's a, a six-year-old english setter so two setters and then we have a brand new rocker dog that has that's been doing some miles with us and his name's fritz he just turned one and he's a long-haired dox miniature dachshund and uh if your listeners are curious enough like his instagram you can see him and there's pictures of him he's like a little smushed up uh squished version of the two bigger dogs so he's got like the coloring of the english setter on his legs and the coloring of the Gordon setter on his face. And it's, he thinks he's an English setter. So <laughs> what's his Instagram? Uh, Fritz madness. Okay. It's funny. It Cause might, I had, you know, like hold I said, on. it might be Fritz. What is it? Fritz dot madness. My wife does it. But. Okay. Um, like I said, I draw so much upon Instagram and lucky for yeah. me, you've got the two dogs, one cat Instagram. You've got, your Instagram, you've got the band's Instagram and you've got the rock and tourist Instagram. Yeah. So, so a- and the two dogs, one cat has been pretty dormant for a while. Yes. Um, there's another one. Pot- Potter, Potter Wallsmith has his own. He's the English setter. All right. And he's right. really, since we got Fritz, he's the most active one, you know? So um, <laughs> my wife swears that she, that he's not like her, her favorite, but you wouldn't know it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, working backwards i guess uh let's talk about the context of how these dogs came into your life so fritz is the newest one year ago you already have two dogs we'll get into it in a minute but you're an extensive traveler you're you're kind of one of these van life um couples so what was the context of of bringing fritz in the mix exactly i don't know i I think maybe (laughs) my wife should be on this podcast but uh no you know I think the answer to that question is, and I, and I know that this is a, a sort of a podcast for like related to my band, the Nadas, and I've been in that band for 30 years, but for the past few years, we've been traveling way more with just my wife and I in a van and doing the van life thing. Like you mentioned, um, you know, this year back with the Nadas, well, I didn't go away with the Nadas, but now this is a year that's heavy on the Nadas because of a new record. But for the past few years, I've been pushing a solo record and I've been out playing shows in 42 or 43 States about 150,000 miles since July of 2020. Um, So I've done a lot of travel and we traveled with those two setters the whole time. They did all those miles and they're great travel dogs and it's been a blast. But while we were out on the road and when we got into this van life community at all these different destinations and events around the country, we just kept meeting little dachshunds that we loved. And one of our good friends that we run into a lot at a lot of van events all over the U S and, and including down in Baja, Mexico, um, a couple times, brought her little wiener dog named Oscar, and we kind of fell in love with him. So then that just started the conversation, well, someday maybe we should get a wiener dog, you know? And that conversation, I think maybe the one time I sort of accidentally sort of expressed an interest in that, my wife was like, oh, found one. Yeah, seized upon. Yeah, (laughs) she's listening too, and she's probably shaking your head this whole time but I, i'm super happy i was very scared to add a third dog to a small van right uh, <laughs> but he is a small dog i mean he doesn't know it he thinks he's just one of the big dogs but he's a great traveler too so we're really lucky when we picked him up from from uh the person we got him from she's like oh, he, he he's not very good in a vehicle <laughs> and i was oh, thinking boy. it's gonna be bad the one but prerequisite yeah yep well correct me if i'm wrong were you i think did you have a 12 hour road trip home from picking him up? Yeah. Well, pretty much. Yeah. From, from Colorado to Iowa. Um, okay. And it definitely turned into a 12 hour road trip with a puppy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, he was great. He sat on, sat on our laps the whole time. And, and now he just, 
he'll go everywhere and just sort of sit on the lap of the passenger or the driver. And I don't know, there's probably some, some dog safety experts out there who would say that's probably not the, the best, but he's a really great travel companion. Yeah. I, I, unfortunately I can't criticize you cause I have a dog that pretty much rides in my lap. I'm still 10 and two, but right between it, this is a 22 pound, uh, golden doodle. Okay. All right. Well, we've also encountered some pretty spectacular golden doodles out there, including one uh, in Arizona that we think was a, a golden doodle, like mixed with a dachshund. He just, he looked like a golden doodle, except for he had really short legs and he was long. <laughs> and, and it started us talking about, uh, you know, carrying on that great dog. So, but we, <laughs> so how was, how did Fritz, how, how did Fritz mix in with Potter and Pepper pretty easily? Or was there a yeah, learning great, curve? You know, no, no, really great. Pepper is, um, she's a senior dog. She's got a little bit of doggy dementia. She's very gentle, but also has no interest in anybody or any other dog really anymore. She's just, she, she's a, she's a great napper. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know, at first when he was, when he was being a puppy around her, she, she got a little snippy, but it was not never even a concern. It was just clearly a, it was a, her setting her boundaries and he learned fast and then Potter, even though he's six, he's still got a lot of puppy in him. So he just got a, a playmate, you know, and uh, they're great friends. It's I mean, I hope you look at that Instagram. I hope your listeners do there. There's a lot of good stuff of them playing with each other. And, and uh, if if you weren't a human, you wouldn't know that they were not the same size or like litter mates or something. You know? right. So they're they're great. They're fun. Yeah, we, we recently had I didn't know much about Dotsons and um you know, as I've done this show, I've realized that I did have more exposure to a lot of different breeds than I had realized, but a Datsun wasn't really one of them. I couldn't trace it back to a relative or a friend, but I was interested to learn how tough they are or like their, their legacy is Fearless, of, a, yeah. of a, weren't they sent to like weed out ferrets or badgers or yeah. something? Yeah. The, I think the word dox, doxion or whatever means badger, badger hunter, badger hunter, yeah. badger hound. Yeah, and you can tell by their design, by the loudness of their bark, by their long tail, and by their fearless nature that they, they were just designed to go in badger holes and come face to face <laughs> with a badger and just bark at them until their, you know, their <laughs> owner or their hunter came and grabbed them by the tail and pulled them out of the hole. You know, Yeah, they're, they're fearless, um, tough little guys. And the, 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 the thing is, like, they come by some of their reputation naturally as the, the, you know, they're very vocal and they're very loud. His bark is way louder than either of those other dogs. Wow. And they're very stubborn. And so they have these characteristics. I, I think uh, before we even got them, we, we had heard from someone that their recall, they had a 50% recall. So I don't know if that means, I think what that means is half the time you call them, they come, right? But really it's like half the time you call them half the time they come halfway only if they're in the mood, if they're looking at you and it happens to be like a certain hour of the day. Right. Um, and no, those things would normally be very irritating to me. You know, like the Gordon setter and the English setter are very obedient, very responsive, um, pay attention to me all the time, no, doing what I want them to do. And so that should be very irritating to me, but he's so cute that it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> you know so now in all honesty my wife has them all three trained on an e-collar and they're very obedient with her on that e-collar and so you know there's things you can do and i just sort of i just sort of ignore it i guess right because he's so cute. well let's circle back to the e-collar because that's is something i just noticed because it's funny it's in my feed i see the ad for it all the time i think one i think it's the phi collar uh, I'm, I'm interested to ask you about that but staying on topic Let's move to Potter at, at six. What was the impetus for getting him at the time? Uh, well, I think I have very specific answers for all these questions. But so prior to Potter and before our, before our solo or couple van life time, so pre-COVID, um, we had a Llewellyn setter, which is an English setter as well, an older. We got her when she was nine. And she was a great dog. And... And that's she Greta, in, correct? That was Greta, yeah. Greta. Wow, you, I don't, I don't know how you got all this info, but that's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was Greta. She was a great dog. We loved her. She was our, she was our first dog as a married couple. And then uh, when she passed away, we were going actually on a Nada's cruise. We do these cruises every year. And we 
we had to make that hard decision before we left for about two weeks. And, and it was just very evident that she wasn't going to make it. And so when we left on that cruise, we made that decision and we boarded Pepper. We don't board the dogs very much, but when we went on a cruise is one of those times that we have to. And we boarded her with the guy that my family's, uh, it's a, a husband and wife in a kennel that we've used for a long time out in the country. And he's mm-hmm. like a former, he was a former gun dog magazine editor and a dog trainer and just a really great guy. And so he always had a kennel full of great dogs. And so we took Pepper out there for the first time by herself. We were, we were worried for her that she was going to be missing her, you know, kennel mate. And he had two English setters puppies in the kennel next to her. And uh, I think as we dropped her off, even though it was very fresh and it was very raw, we thought, I wonder what's going on with those dogs. They were new to the team, you know? And when we got back from the cruise, we said, what, did, did she get along with these dogs? And, and he said, yeah. And, and we said, what, what's your plan with them? And he said, pick one. And so that's how we got Potter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting to, you know, in comparing and contrasting with previous guests, there usually is a sometimes quite a long stretch of time between dogs. You know, when a dog passes, especially a dog that's, you know, had such a profound effect in your life. But I, you know, I haven't experienced that. I'm, you know, my dog's five, so I'm a relatively new dog owner. And I'm curious because I, I kind of feel like I will probably try to jump right back into it, especially I volunteer at rescue. So I see like the need, but right. um, it's just curious to take that note. Because again, I've seen a lot of people that it really have those long gaps in between, in between dogs. But uh, yeah, I did find Greta somewhere on one of your, <laughs> you've got five or six uh, Instagram pages. And just to touch upon her for a second, I noticed, you know, I always look for you know, stories or drama. And I noticed, you know, she had a broken toe once you've got a, a an x-ray, but she also had, looks like stitches across her face. Staples, was that a, yeah. was that a, what was that a result of? So she, she was a hunter. She came to us as a hunter. And so we're in Iowa. We have, we have uh, pheasant hunting, pheasant quail, uh, upland game hunting here. And she was, we got her when she was nine and it was a sort of rescue in that she came from a, a, a hunting uh, outfitter kennel. So she was a working hunting dog for her whole life up until when she was nine. Um, and then that guy passed away and they didn't have a plan for all his dogs. He had a whole kennel full of dogs, over a dozen dogs. Um, we didn't know she was nine, but I went and said, yeah, we'll take one of these dogs. A friend of a friend said they, we didn't need to rehome these dogs. And so we, we brought her into that hunting life. She already came from that. We continued with her hunting lifestyle. That, that particular cut on her face was from another hunting dog on a, on a hunting trip. Sometimes the dogs all get along. Sometimes they don't. And uh, that was a very, uh, that, that was an unfortunate incident with a hunting companion. Yeah. Gosh, I bet. Well, that leads me also to, you know, this is, a, I'll ask this question now is in your travels, you know, in this, in this uh, van life you guys have, and I, I noticed, you know, you do have this huge community of both people and animals. There must be tension sometimes between the different dogs, breeds, sizes, shapes, and all that. Is there, um, or, or are all the dogs kind of acclimated to being kind of these chill, you know, travel dogs? Yeah. Well, for the most part, I would say in all but one instance, the dogs all get along you know, and owner, you know, it's important for owners to know their dogs and know yeah. their tolerance for that. And so I wouldn't ever, even the, the one instance I can think of where we had an issue, I, I wouldn't blame the dog. Um, yeah. I don't even really blame the owner the, you know, sometimes it's just circumstances are weird and things happen, but, but for our dogs, um, they're all very, they're very socialized and we've had great luck with that. Especially Fritz has met, hundreds of dogs in his first year of his life and there's not been a dog that he doesn't get along with you know um Mm -hmm. but he is the one instance where we had a little bit of a scary scuffle with a with a dog that we didn't really know but for the most part um they're all well socialized well trained good dogs great great all right well moving on to pepper your oldest at 13 what was going on in your life 13 years ago (laughs) <laughs> well, that's funny. I, uh, I, I don't, I felt, I think I'll just tell you exactly. So that I was, uh, I had a different Gordon setter. I was married. I got a divorce. I lost the Gordon setter in the divorce. 
and I had recently gotten Greta. So I had this one dog and that same kennel that I was talking about where we got Potter, we had, we were boarding Greta and that gentleman, his name's Ed Butler, Ed and Derry Butler. He said, Hey, I know you like Gordon setters. I got you one. Come pick her up. So he had trained this, this Gordon setter as a hunter for someone that person it's funny enough and ironic i think that he this person had decided to uh, move into an rv and travel the country and they didn't think they had time or uh, the ability to keep pepper right and so he forfeited her to this kennel where where she was trained originally and so he said i got you a gordon center come pick her up so i came and picked her up and that was it was i didn't even have a say in the matter (laughs) and that was my first time having two dogs which I never thought I would have two dogs. I never, like, I was nervous about that. Even when I did pick her up, I thought, I don't know if I'm able to handle this, but it's been the best thing and probably gave us the confidence to have three, which I know is a little bit crazy. Right. Well, again, it all goes back to the van, especially in the van. Yeah. So Pepper and Greta spent time together. Did Did they hit it off right away? Yeah, they were great. Uh, it was amazing watching the evolution of both those dogs. Pepper was three, but she was kind of a puppy and it was a little, you know, Greta was definitely a senior dog. Um, Greta was a breeding female. And so she'd had many, many litters of puppies. She knew exactly how to deal with young mischievous dog and Pepper really res- respected Pepper from the, from the beginning, uh, but had that boundless energy that she uh you know, would sometimes get the better of her and then Greta would put her in her place. What was amazing, you haven't asked this question yet, but what was amazing was when Greta was gone and we moved the, you know, Potter right into the equation, Pepper's personality overnight became that of a matriarch. Uh, She, and you know, she was older at that time, so I'm not good on all the math here, but um, Mm -hmm. She had, be, she had become a little bit more mature of a dog, but her personality changed overnight. We have a picture of Greta and Pepper laying, you know, Greta was this beautiful white uh, Llewellyn. Pepper's a, a black and brown dog, mostly black. We have this picture of them laying on a bed together, kind of in a yin and yang sort of position. Right. And, uh, or I think Greta, Greta was on the bed, Pepper was on the ground, but they're in this yin and yang. And one of the first things we saw when Greta was gone, Potter was in the mix. Pepper became the matriarch is that exact same pose, except Pepper was in the bed. Potter was on the ground and they just fit right into their roles. You know, that's Um, great. I don't feel like we had anything to do with that. It was like completely natural and, and it was amazing to watch happen. Yeah. I mean, that's great to, I mean, it's one of the best parts of, of having a dog is seeing how nature takes over, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's very cool. Now, before I forget, I won't dwell on this subject, but the subject of divorce and, and losing the dog, again, I go back to my previous episodes where uh, instances ha- have been where they shared the dog. They had these yeah. arrangements where they shared the dog. How did you end up not having the dog in the divorce? <laughs> I actually assumed that's what would happen, you know? And when I when we made our custody arrangement for our children, I assumed the dog would go with the children. I don't know why. Okay. I never really talked about it. And then it just became another thing to sort of disagree about. And I just didn't want to disagree anymore. Yeah. So I just let that, let that go. And yeah. I, you know, I actually still, her, her name was Maisie. She's still around. I still hunted her every once in a while. Um, and we watched her for a while until that was like, uh, when asked until that became kind of too much. So, um, yeah, just the circumstances, just something okay. I gave up. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no judgment for me. And when I hear kids involved, it seems natural that if, if the kids are involved, you know, with the dog, raising the dog, that, that makes perfect sense. And, mm-hmm. you know, but we don't need to, we don't need to dwell on that. But I was curious, just uh, the top line of that. Yeah. So um, with the band, do, do the dogs ever mingle with the band? Or did they ever go on tour with you guys? Or are they kind of yeah, a little, separating a little church yeah. and state? I can't say that I've very often brought the dogs like into the band vehicle and really when we're traveling as a band with the band even previous dogs there was there was um you know the schedule for the band was such that it was back-to-back nights big cities lots of interstate time lots of hotel time or you know very little hotel time but you know that it wasn't conducive to dogs really 
when I started traveling along with the band, but separate from the band, which I did a little bit prior to COVID and prior to my, my van life. It's funny to talk about his van life. Cause I've had a dozen vans and I've been in vans my whole career, except for when right. we were in buses. But now this part of my world is a little bit more hashtag van life. And I love it. <laughs> and, and so because I love it and because I love traveling with my wife and our dogs and our own home in on wheels, I then I end up kind of going separate from the band and meeting them or traveling along with them, but in my own vehicle and doing our own right. thing. And because of that, we can build a little bit more time and, and build the schedule around what we want to see and do. And so, so back to your original question, there've been a few times where I've driven along uh, separately for different, we do this like three night summer camp, we call it in Colorado. And we usually bring the dogs because they get to run around the mountains and have fun. Um, so when I get to travel on my own, schedule into my own terms then we bring the dogs if i'm just okay. with the band crammed in a van going from hotel to hotel to venue to venue then i don't as much okay jumping upon just your expression of the dogs running around having fun does fritz ever find a hole and go head first <laughs> sometimes he makes a hole um <laughs> we've never lost him in a badger hole yet but you know it's it, it you do you do see the the nature in the burrowing you, you more see it in like couch cushions and pillows and blankets and, and things like that. No, I've never lost him in a hole yet. <laughs> and when you did embark on this, I mean, have you just, when I, again, with the quotes, van life, has this started just with the COVID? I mean, I know the story again, going to Instagram that it's, you know, you guys decided to hit the road and play socially distant shows. Yep. Did you decide to bring the dogs out of necessity because there was a, really no other choice? Well, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it that way, actually, but it was, mm -hmm. it did definitely start with COVID pre COVID. We went to that kennel almost all the time. The dogs were, it was almost like their weekend home. So if right. my wife traveled with me and she did travel with the band for a long time, the dogs would go to the kennel and it was out in the country and they had both come from there and they loved it there. They got to run around the country there too. Um, so we just sort of thought of it as the way life worked. If we were traveling with the band, for the most part, the dogs went to the kennel, but with COVID, yeah, we got to kind of change the rules and remake our life in this kind of Renaissance way where we almost, it, the dogs were definitely part of the decision where it was like, well, we could just hit the road. And if we have a vehicle that's self-contained, we won't have to stay in hotels. We won't have to go to restaurants. It, the, the, we bought the van we bought because it'll run air conditioning for right. 12 hours right. a day and the dogs are safe in there. A lot of the people in this van community travel with dogs and a lot of them have stickers on there that say canine, uh, climate controlled, uh, canine environment, things like that. Um, so I would say a lot of the decisions we made around COVID and around that, that I'll play anywhere man tour we did because of, or with the dogs in mind, um, right. the van we bought is called the storyteller overland. And I, I, a large portion of people who buy that van, buy that van for their dogs. <laughs> yeah. So, so that well, I, I, I saw, I saw a couple of posts where you did uh, tout the air conditioning and that was such a big deal or just climate control period, whether it's hot or cold, what yeah. were some of the other challenges just with bringing dogs on the road that you, would you, what were you quick to learn? Yeah. Well, at first, and I think this is going to come back around to one of your other topics, but at first when it was just the two setters, setters, which are very prey driven, uh, animals. Uh, it was really hard to keep them. You know, we had them tethered to the van everywhere we went, no matter how far. I mean, one time we were in on, on someone's ranch in Montana that happened to be like a t over 20,000 acre ranch and the dogs wanted to run. They wanted to look for birds in the grass. And I got, you know, they took off and I kind of, you know, started to get that panic, like, Oh my gosh, where are the dogs going? And the landowner was like, where are they going to go? It's fine they'll be back. But for the most part, the biggest challenge was kind of like how to uh, manage them with their propensity to run. But the big, the life changing thing was that e-collar. Um, so we can get into it when you want to, but, um, and the FI is a different th thing. That's, that's more of a tracking device. Okay. But we use a training collar as well. So they have a FI, they have a an e-collar that's a training device when we're home they have an invisible fence which was life-changing for them as well mm -hmm. so it's just sort of like a natural extension to that prior to that they were on tethers and it was just sort of a pain for the dogs and a pain for us and when we put them on that invisible fence so they knew where that boundary was it was awesome 
for both okay. for the dogs and for us. Well, we can get in it, into it now. I mean, briefly, just the, so the e collar is more, or I don't know what to call each one. The training collar is more that's either can can vibrate or in some yep. instances shock, yep. um, and that's just basic, you know, uh, dog training. And then the fi, what I've seen online is that that you can track them, you can see how long you they see sleep, them on a map. how much yep. they run. You can see, oh, okay, that's great. It's, it's like cool. a, it's kind of like a a Fitbit with a GPS on it, with an air tag. I mean, yeah. mixing all of our products here, but uh, it, it tracks their steps, which our dogs are ranked nationally by their number of steps. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Gordon and and Pepper for Gordon Setters was ranked very highly, actually. And then, but it also tracks them on a map. And so there's been a couple times pre e collar or one time with e collar, but when Potter happened to know, somehow he knew that we lost the remote controller for it like in an instant we were we're like where's the where'd the remote go it was just here and then he just took off um <laughs> and then we used that fi to see where he was on the map and went and found him like two miles away five minutes later so oh my gosh that's crazy but that's really the only time that's happened yeah. and he's i don't know with the e-collar on she doesn't even really have to buzz it anymore and she just uses vibrate if they know they have the collar on and the remote's there they just yeah. stay with us yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, this isn't so much a question. I pulled a quote, but this will this will answer the question of what, you know what are kind of some of the benefits of traveling with dogs. And the quote is: "The dogs remind us to take a break from the road every now and then, and find some green space and take the scenic route." So does that still hold true? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's like some of our favorite uh, moments have been exploring uh, different communities, different places, whether it's wilderness places or even dog parks in towns you know usually the the dog parks in the town are sort of the gateway to something else interesting you know so awesome definitely and and the and the break part is is really important to uh otherwise who knows you know you just might you might just be on the pavement the whole time yeah well it's funny you, you must have a totally different mindset because when i'm in a car i'm like i gotta get there like no stops you know i'll be the guy on e that has to push it just not to stop and get gas i have a totally different mindset. And I understand that mindset. You know, I, I know that's the common way and that's, and I've participated in that for much of my life, but the, the van, the hashtag van life has changed that. And not only has it changed that, but, but that change has changed life. And I would encourage you to try to experience this in some way, because not only do I not, if possible, I'm not trying to figure out how fast I can get some place, but I'm actually trying to figure out how, how interesting I can get someplace. And right. like one of my favorite things to do is to not use a GPS and, or there's actually, it took me a while to learn this, but there's a different way to use a GPS, which is you put in your destination and then you just start wandering. It, the GPS will always help you get back to yeah. where you need yeah. to be. Right. Yeah. So you just start taking the most interesting route and, and try to find the most scenic ways and it'll always help you get there. And it'll always tell you how long from that point it's going to take. Yeah. To, so you can kind of still stay on track, but um, yeah, I mean, not only just driving times, but the ability to not have to schedule where you're going to stay or what you're going to see or, you know, has been amazing because during the COVID time for the solo stuff, I was mostly playing private shows. Mm -hmm. It meant that the time was a little bit more fluid and people weren't that uptight about schedules, you know? And so I don't know, it's been amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, just visit, I guess probably the, the Rack and Taurus page is very alluring. I mean, going through that, it's like, wow, that could be uh, could be a fun to try that for a couple of weeks. Yeah, and you can do it. You can rent, rent them. I mean, to be fully honest, the, the van costs more than our house. And a lot of people like to point that out in sort of a, a jab sort of way, like, I could get a house for that. But I always I always say, well, can you drive your house around the country? And, yeah, you know, it's go the, the experience. Green drive one that goes to Florida and you know, it's been, it's been awesome. So I would, I would pay double what we paid for that van. Yeah. Um, but if you're not willing to commit a house worth of money to a van, you can also rent them um, all over the country. So it's, yeah. it's, it's an amazing experience. Yeah. I'll have to give it a try. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into the zoomies. Five zoomies. questions to end the show. The first one is, do you kiss any of your three dogs on the mouth? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, not like in a vulgar way, but, but yeah, yeah kiss them all. Really I'm a big nice. proponent of kissing the dog on the mouth. Okay, good. All right. I but, thought you were, I thought maybe there was some judgment there. That I was <laughs> yeah, there, 
there's no there's no there's no secret behind that question i get i get a lot of people that just say anything but the mouth top of the head yada yada but anyway <laughs> question two you can pick any of your dogs but uh do any of them if they could have a theme song what would it be do any oh, of their personalities yeah. line up with perfectly with a tune they all actually have their own theme song so peppers is pepper and pepper and we're in one in a million uh that my wife that's my wife's uh gave her that song and then Frit, what's fritz's song again i can't remember fritz 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 my puppy uh that's fritz's <laughs> what's potter i don't think potter has a theme song but he just gets Harry Potter references all the time. I'm sorry. Okay. We should have done this interview with her. So, so Fritz, 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 <laughs> that's uh, Shake Your Booty? Fritz, Fritz, yeah. Fritz, 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 Okay. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay. Uh, question three. If these dogs toured with you, what would they insist be on the tour rider? <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, they all love these bully sticks. I don't know. Okay. Is that a brand or is that a thing? I think so. Yeah, all of these bully sticks. They insist it's on the rider. Sometimes they'll, they won't eat their food because they know they'll get a bully stick if they don't. <laughs> eat enough, you know? um, probably bully sticks. Okay. And question four, do you use a dog voice or do you give each one of them their own dog voice? Oh, as if it's their like, voice. It's a two part question. Yeah. Either do you speak to them in a certain way, you know, with a high pitch or a baby voice or the, other way is do you personify them and give them a voice speak for them <laughs> all right so the first part i definitely alter you know change my pitch of my voice and and the way i talk to them uh high and low depending on what i'm trying to communicate and and each dog gets I the same like, yeah 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 it's just yeah. my it's my yeah. per, my dog communication persona and i and i speak this is the third part of your question which you didn't ask is I also speak in their language. So like Pepper, Gordon Setters, I think all Gordon Setters have this Chewbacca sound that they make. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of that before, but uh -uh. Um, so she'll just, if she wants something, she'll just give you this Chewbacca sound. So I try to give that back to her. <laughs> and uh, I bark at Fritz when he barks at me because he's got this like ear piercingly loud. That's the little one. Yeah. Ear piercingly loud bark. Like he's, he just gets all puffed up and he just barks. And so I just bark right back at him. And, uh, Potter's got a little bit of a howl that I do. So I speak to them in their language. And then, yes, my voice goes up or down, depending on what I'm trying to commun communicate to them. And I think, I think that's a good training technique. I don't know. Um, I don't have a voice for them. No. Okay. But my okay. wife, Emma, she, is, she speaks in their voice all the time. <laughs> to the Be cu I, curious yeah. to hear that sometime. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, is there a dog organization or service that you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah. Is the puppy Jake organization is that a local thing or is that a national thing do you know i don't i don't think i've heard of that it's called the is the puppy, puppy jake. jake yeah it's uh so we've had a few fans and friends over the years who volunteer for that organization and train service dogs for veterans okay if it is local i'm even more happy that i'm able to talk about it because i think it's awesome and uh and yeah, I think it's a, a great, a great cause. I love what dogs are doing for veterans suffering from PTSD. Yeah. Um, and some of our fans have participated in that. So happy to, happy to call out that organization, the puppy, puppy Jake, it might be called the puppy Jake foundation. I'm not sure. Okay. I'll look it up and I can uh, give some more info in my outro. Awesome. Um, Thank you. But yeah, I, I love, I love that, uh, that type of organization too. Um, can I make a suggestion for a other question that you should ask your guests? Sure. Do you let your dog sleep in bed? It kind of goes along with the, uh, yeah, the mouth yes. kissing yeah. question. <laughs> um, because I like this one because we've, we've always had a strict, no dogs in bed policy. That's my policy. I'm very right. strict about it. And, uh, and yet Fritz somehow only sleeps in bed now and his burrowing, um, nature Right. Lends itself to this funny sort of thing he does where he'll like sleep up by our, you know, by our faces for a while. And then in the middle of the night, he'll get up and he'll burrow down under the covers and go all the way to the bottom of the bed. Oh my gosh. Times of the night he'll get, he'll switch those things, but, but it's so cute that I don't care that I wake up, you know? <laughs> so anyway, and so now that he does that, our, our no dogs in bed policy has been thrown to the wind. So the two, do the two big dogs, are they allowed on the bed? 
Only if there's a thunderstorm or this time of year during the uh, fireworks shenanigans, uh, yeah. yes, they get kind of they get kind of scared. So yeah, they come up and and get comforted in that way. But most of the time, they they sleep in the van. They sleep on this. Uh, it's called the Groove Lounge. It's specific okay. to the storyteller, yep. but it's just a big couch. They they both the, the both big ones sleep on that, and the little one sleeps up in bed. And sometimes Potter will look up there like, "Why does he get to be in there?" <laughs> but for the most part, they're pretty happy. That's awesome. Well, Jason, thank you again. This is very entertaining for me, and I know uh, you travel the country, so sooner or later you'll be in my neck of the woods, so uh, I'll definitely make it out to hopefully see you and the dogs. I appreciate that. Thank you for the time, and what a fun show. I am super excited to tune into it and become a fan. So, Well, thank you. Let me, let me know what you think. All right. Thanks again. Okay. Right. Thank you, Jason Wallsmith of the band The Nadas, for sharing your dogs and their stories with us. The Nadas are currently on their Come Along for the Ride tour. Check thenadas.com for dates and venues. To keep up with Jason and the dogs' van living adventures, follow The Rackin' Tourists on Instagram and YouTube and other social media. The dog organization Jason is shining a spotlight on is the Puppy Jake Foundation who are dedicated to helping military veterans through the assistance of well-bred, socialized, and professionally trained service dogs. They proudly select, train, and place only the best performing dogs with deserving men and women. For more information or to make a donation, visit puppyjakefoundation.org. Thank you for tuning in to this episode and the show. If you're not following us on Instagram, please do at Rocker Dog Podcast, where you'll find pictures and videos of our guests and their dogs. We'll be back next week with another great new episode featuring an artist who recently resurrected his influential hardcore music zine. So please join us for that. All right, it's time to give Charlie my undivided attention. We'll see you next week.